The Republican Party has a problem, and his name is Ted Nugent. Just listen to the vile way the rocker recently described President Obama. I have obviously failed to galvanize and prod, if not shame, enough Americans <laughs> to be ever vigilant not to let a Chicago communist-raised, communist-educated, communist-nurtured, subhuman mongrel like the acorn community organizer gangster Barack Hussein Obama to weasel his way into the top office of authority in the United States of America. Subhuman mongrel? That's disgusting. I mean, that's no way to talk about anybody, mess, much less the president of the United States. But why should we care what Ted Nugent thinks? Well, because Republicans care. This is the type of man some party leaders are embracing right now. The Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott is using Ted Nugent's support in his campaign for governor. They appeared at a campaign event just yesterday, and Abbott actually praised him. Thank you, Ted Nugent, a fighter for freedom in this country. So the man who called our president a subhuman mongrel is a fighter for freedom? Instead of denouncing Nugent's kind of extremism, too many Republicans are embracing it. Nugent was also a prominent backer of current Texas Governor Rick Perry. In fact, Nugent even performed at the governor's inaugural ball, wearing a Confederate flag T-shirt. Even Mitt Romney sought out Nugent's endorsement. That's right. The GOP's presidential candidate wanted support from a man who went on to say this. If Barack Obama becomes the president in November again, I will either be dead or in jail by this time next year. The Secret Service actually paid Nugent a visit after that to see if he posed a threat of any kind. But that didn't stop a Republican congressman from inviting Nugent to the State of the Union just two months later. So, no, we shouldn't care about Ted Nugent, but we should care about the stunning lack of judgment and lack of leadership shown by these politicians who want Ted Nugent to help them win votes. Joining me now is Karen Finney, host of MSNBC's Disrupt, and Wayne Slater, senior political writer, Dallas Morning News. Thank you both for coming on the show. Thanks, Rev. Karen, what does it say about some GOP leaders that they continually close up with a man who calls the president a subhuman mongrel and other things. And I'm talking about these things now, yeah. recent. We're not going back decades here. Right. And you don't even have to go back that far for some of the most horrible comments. I think what it says, Reverend, is that there is a comfort level with that kind of language and that kind of hatred because they recognize he's got an audience. He represent, he's got a base of supporters. I mean, one of the articles from the Abbott people said that when they announced that uh, Nugent was coming, their numbers increased. So clearly there is a crass political reason that they don't feel the need to disassociate themselves uh, with Ted Nugent. I think the problem becomes, how do you say a man like that stands up for liberty and freedom? and then make an argument to the whole state of Texas that you will represent the interests of every single person when that's the kind of hatred that you're supporting. Now, Wayne Greg Abbott, the attorney general in Texas there and candidate for governor, he defended campaigning with Nugent. Listen to what he said. Wendy Davis is more associated with Barack Obama than anybody in the state. I don't think there's anybody in the state who's disliked more than Barack Obama. If there is this uh, effect by relationship that they want to trump up, then that's a game that will be to the detriment of the Davis campaign because of their ties to Barack Obama. Now, now help me out here, Wayne. Is he insinuating that Ted Nugent and President Obama are the same thing? He is insinuating that in one regard, and that, frankly, is kind of troubling, you'd have to say, and that is to suggest that Barack Obama is more disliked in Texas than 
Ted Nugent, that you'd rather be associated with Nugent than be associated with Obama. What that does raise, let's assume that's true for a moment, at least in the context that he gave it. What that does say is there is a constituency in the Republican Party, in the hard right, the birther, bircher, secessionist wing of the party, that believes that they like the things that Ted Cruz has said, are willing to look out and look over those because of his support of the Second Amendment compared to Barack Obama. If that is true, who are these voters? What is it that they want? And how does that reflect on the Texas constituencies who say, you know, this is what we think voters are all about in Texas? It is, as Karen said, a crass political calculation for Greg Abbott trying to make an appeal and to excite the far right yeah. of the Republican Party in order to win now and in November. Well, going back to that point, Karen, the fact mm -hmm. is, uh, if the president was as unpopular or more unpopular than Ted Nugent in Texas, they certainly aren't unpopular for the same reasons. So <laughs> clearly, it is a statement about a candidate that would stand with Nugent and mm -hmm. what Nugent has said and therefore represents than in Wendy Davis standing with the president, who may be right. controversial because they disagree with him on policies like affordable health care, minimum wage, not because he says such crass and, and, and unbelievably offensive things. Well, that's exactly right, Reverend. But, the, you know, the other thing of it is it says that the Abbott campaign is willing to run on hate. And that is dangerous. I mean, as an American, we should all be offended by that. This is a country that is about we're supposed to be one country. It's one thing to, you know, disagree. You may not like the president. You may not like his policies. Then talk about that. But, this, you know, this language about mongrels and some of the other horrible things that he said about the president, not just the president, lots of I mean, he's a pretty equal opportunity offense. But I think particularly when we're talking about the presidency of the United States of America, there needs to be some level of respect. And some are trying to suggest that there's some false equivalency here that, oh, well, Democrats have, you know, talk like that, too, sometimes. Not to this degree and not when we're talking about campaigning on hate. Now, Greg Abbott and Rick uh, Perry are not the only Republicans cozy with, uh, with Rocker, Wayne. Listen to what Nugent said last year. I work close with uh, Ted Cruz, who's a great patriot, a great statesman. I work close with Scott Walker's team in Wisconsin. I've worked with different sheriffs and different uh, uh, attorney generals. I work closely with Greg Abbott and Governor Perry in Texas. So he seems to have a good relationship with several very prominent Republicans, according to him. Wayne? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think he certainly believes that, and frankly, that may be true in some cases. I go back to the idea that who are these voters you're trying to appeal to? As Karen says, these are the voters who are uh, energized by hate and by rather despicable things. It's not just that he called the president a mongrel, which has racial, ethnic, and historical antecedents that are very, very dark, but that he called women leaders fat pigs— and these are the kinds of things that I have to say won't appeal to a majority of voters in the fall and, and raises raise questions about whether suburban women, moderates, independent, and maybe even Republican-leaning women might say, wait a minute, let's take a look yeah. at Wendy Davis because of the company that Greg Abbott keeps. Well, Karen, all this extremist negative talk has hurt the Republican Party. Just 25% of Americans identify as Republicans. That's the lowest number in the last 25 years. Well, that's right. And we're also seeing numbers that suggest that increasingly on issues, even moderate Republicans feel like the Republican Party doesn't represent their values, doesn't represent what they think. So certainly you would think to the to your opening premise that there would be some consciousness within the Republican Party that, you know, campaigning with a person who is endorsing hate and campaigning on hate is probably not a good strategy if you're trying to make an appeal to the broader United States of America. Karen Finney. Yeah, but, but Wayne. Reverend, Reverend, wait a minute. Reverend, one, one quick thing. Remember today, Sarah Palin said, if Ted Nugent is good for Greg Abbott, I like Greg Abbott. So there is a constituency there. Yeah. Well, there's no better indicator than 
<laughs> having her make that statement. Karen Finney and Wayne Slater, thank you both for coming on the show tonight.